overview of the remote sensing technology. Now, what do we understand by remote sensing? As the name suggests, we are sensing something remotely without touching the object. Okay? So, basically, uh, you know, the, our vision is also a kind of a remote sensing. We do not touch the object to see it, right? Or a camera technology is a remote sensing where we can get the imprint of the particular object in front of us without touching it. So the same technology is known as a remote sensing technology where we use a specific sensor instrument okay, to gather the data of the earth surface. Okay, and that sensor is mounted on a suitable platform at a distance from the object. So we do not touch the object, but we take a particular picture basically of that particular object without touching it with the help of some sensors. Okay? So this is known as a remote sensing technology. And it is very useful. Basically, this remote sensing technology is a source of data to your GIS, geographic information system. And the data help us in our decision making process. Okay? It supports the decision making. That's why it is so important. Now let's have some overview on this uh, the images generated by the remote sensing technology. Like, this is uh, the island in Indonesia in 2004 before tsunami. It's a very high resolution. You know, you can see the buildings. Okay, this is a remotely sensed data. Okay, it's a picture basically, image. Okay, collected by a specific satellite. I'm coming to it. Now, this is after tsunami. Can you see the difference? Then you will be able to assess the damage. Okay, without going to that particular location, with the help of this picture, you will be able to get the you know the changes okay. like this is uh, east coast of india the tsunami event okay so in, around this can you see that 2000 december 2004 26 december 2004 and the 4 january 2004 okay can you see the previous and the next after the tsunami okay the entire island got inundated okay so these differences can be identified and you will be able to analyze, okay, what is the damage. So this is the use of this technology. This is very, you know, very, very useful, very strong. Though it's a very recent science, but it is very useful. Now it is supporting the decision, okay. The policy makers are very, you know, getting the help from this particular. Like this is 9-11, Pentagon, hmm? before and after the attack. Can you identify this? This is Mumbai airport. Now next thing is aircrafts parked in the airport. Okay. Uh, this is Abu Dhabi. Okay? You can see the cars there. So very high resolution. This is Dubai. Okay. Now can you identify this? Rise in a hill, Rashtrapati Bhavan. Okay. This is Taj Mahal and its surrounding. Okay. Eiffel Tower. Ladakh, part of Ladakh. Okay. So these are the images captured by some sensors mounted on a suitable platform. Okay. The sensors are basically the cameras which can capture the the picture actually, okay? So, the technology is, uh, the definition is very simple, like information gathered by instruments carried on suitable platforms. The information is used to study targets of interest on the earth surface, okay? So this is the definition of the remote sensing technology. Now, basically the process, if you have to identify, okay? A is the source of energy, okay? It sends the electromagnetic radius, okay? B is the process, it's interaction with the atmosphere. We know that when the sun rays interact with the atmosphere, some will be scattered away, okay, reflected back, and some gets penetrated through the atmosphere, okay, the atmospheric particles. Then it reaches the target and it interacts with the target in three ways. Some of this radiation will be absorbed, okay, some of it will be emission, okay, and the transmission. So some will be emitted, some will be transmitted, some of this energy will be absorbed. So that reflected energy 
okay, which will be emitted from the surface, it will, it will be reflected back to the atmosphere, will be captured by D, which is that particular instrument mounted on a particular platform. So here the platform is a satellite platform. So it is a satellite SB, satellite vehicle, where the sensor is mounted. So it receives that particular reflected back uh, the radiation and will get the data which will be transmitted back to your uh, E, which is the receiver stations. Okay, so they receive the data regarding those uh, you know captured objects. Okay, maybe in a numerical data or in a you know in a film data kind of a thing. So they are capturing and then we we'll go for interpretation and analysis and then application part. So inter interpretation and analysis will be those visual images which I have already shown. Okay, these are your interpreted or analyzed images. Okay, then you can go for application like the change detection. Okay, what was there uh, before tsunami and the after tsunami. Okay, before the attack, after the attack. Okay, before the industrialization, after the industrialization. So these are going to be your application part. So in brief, this is the overall process of the remote sensing. Okay. Now, as I have been continuously referring the suitable platform, suitable platform, suitable platform. What are these platforms? Basically, there are three platforms. Four. First is your space-borne platform, which are the satellite. Okay, which is located more than twenty thousand or um, you know thousand kilometers away from us. Okay. Next is your airborne platform. That means the photographs taken by the aircrafts. Okay, maybe three thousand, four thousand feet away from us. Okay, Air, aircraft. This is a space uh, spaceborne, airborne platform, and a ground-based vehicle. The ground-based vehicle. That means the cameras mounted on a particular vehicle. This is very useful in advanced countries that they mount these camera on the vehicles and they run the vehicles through the downtown areas of the cities. Because due to the, in the downtown areas, due to these high-rise skyscrapers and buildings, it obstructed other objects. So remote sensing technology is viewing from the space that the eye on the space is not sufficient sometimes. So you use the ground-based vehicle to capture the images, okay? The roads and the surrounding images in the urban areas. This is very useful. And the sonar, the sea vessels, okay? Sonar, it can detect, we know that in the ground vessels they detect these objects sending some sound waves, right? So this is a kind of a remote sensing, okay? So basically, broadly, there are three, and for the, uh, your sea vessels, like in, in, inside water, we can also have the remote sensing technology, like sonar. Now, it is used for a range of targets, like the rock types, land use, forest, water, okay? So we know that as we are capturing the picture of the art, we are going to get information, the images of all these objects which are which are there present on the surface of the art. Okay. So remote sensing comprises of two things basically. One is your data acquisition and data analysis. So data acquisition part is the this side where you acquire the sense data. Okay, in the form of a digital format. Okay, and you then you interpret and it send it for analysis. So after analysis, it be, it helps us in our decision support system. So data acquisition and data analysis. These are two basic uh, you know uh, things in case of your remote sensing technology. Now let's take the example of our camera. Okay, what type of cameras we have? Because the sensors are basically cameras. Okay, which can capture the reflected back energy. Hmm? So light is falling on you, it is coming back, same technology like our eyes, it is coming back to me and my, uh, this lens, you know, is capturing this and I have a film kind of a retina, which is film there in case of your camera, okay. So it captures that particular reflected back light, same technology. But here, in case of your sensors, we have two types of sensors in case of remote sensing. Similarly, like we have in our camera technology, like if you have bright sunlight, you do not use the flash. Okay? Why is it required to use the flash when it is dark? Why? Because we need the light to fall on that particular object and to come back. So, whenever you, you that the kind of cameras or the sensors which can 
use or which can operate without light. These are known as the passive sensors, which can only operate in presence of light, are the, which, which has its own light active and which can operate, sorry, which can operate with its own light. These are the passive. See, this is active. It has its own light. Okay? So, rudder, leader, okay? Radiation detection and ranging, light detection and ranging, okay? Sound detection and ranging, then light amplified and stimulated energy radiation, laser. These are all kind of active sensors, okay? They send their own energy and capture the reflected back energy. So, they can operate without sound. That means without the EMR of the sun, electromagnetic radiation, because they have their own energy to send and to capture. Like the thermal infrared scanner detected the heat given by a target. Okay, at any point of time it can capture. Okay, sonar, radar, X-ray, laser, all are the active remote sensing. Okay, because they have their own source of light, energy. For example, the flash you are using in your normal camera. Okay, this is active. Now this is passive. Okay, this is passive. Why? Because it can only operate in presence of light, sunlight, EMR, electromagnetic radiation. So these are the passive sensors. So we also have both passive and active sensors. Okay. So this is a normal technology. As I have already mentioned, the photographs are taken by the cameras using film, which is sensitive to different wavelengths of radiation. At different wavelengths, it captured that particular object. Okay, so the blue object will appear as blue, hmm? green will appear as green, because they are reflecting their energy in the green band or blue band kind of a thing. That's why we a black body completely absorb everything. Okay, that's why it is black. We know this technology, right? So similar, very simple technology. Now this is the particular, you know, tracking. Okay, so the scenes are specific because you see the camera has its own coverage. Like if you try to click a picture using your normal camera, you can only capture a certain amount of, you know, area of the landscape, right? You cannot cover the entire landscape. So similarly, these sensors they also have their own field of views. That means the dimension up to which it can it is going to capture the information okay and to have a continuous data you need this track okay so they sense everything along this track okay so this track scene is acquired line by line so you will we have this path and rows okay so the path will be that particular track through which the sensor will move Okay, and the rows will be that specific scenes. So the path and rows will come, you know, constitutes your entire, you know, scene. Okay, it will come. Suppose you need to uh, capture the image of Guwahati, satellite image of Guwahati. Now, in some satellites, you may require two, three satellite images to capture the entire Guwahati. So there will be some path and rows along which actually the satellites okay, scan this particular landscape, okay? Are you familiar with this type of satellites we have? Like India's launches GSLV, PSLV, okay? GSLV are the geostationary satellites and PSLVs are the polar orbiting satellites. Hmm? What is the difference between geostationary and polar orbiting? Geostationary satellites are basically the communication satellites. They remain fixed on a particular location on the space. Why? Suppose the communication satellite for India, or broadcasting satellite for India, okay, you want, or suppose the weather satellites, which is you know providing us the weather information. The weather satellites you need to remain that satellite over a specific point at all the time so that you can get the weather data. Okay, so these are the geostationary satellites. They are set in their orbit in the same speed of rotating the earth surface. So earth rotates, okay, that speed is same. So they remain, you know, static on a particular point in the space and it is continuously capturing the data. 
But in case of our remote sensing data, most of the remote sensing satellites are the polar orbiting satellites. Okay? So this is a near polar orbit, near polar orbit. Hmm? So some of them have a, has a repeat cycle of four days, three days, same with the GPS. Do you remember? Okay, twice daily passes through a specific point. Okay, so these are the near polar orbits. So they have a repeat time, like three days. After three days or ten days, the same satellite will pass through India, or a specific point. Suppose the Guan. Okay, so if we have a satellite with uh, pass time of fourteen days, so in every month, that particular satellite is going to capture a picture of Guwahati twice. Because there are 14 days, is a time period, okay? repeat time, repeat cycle. So this is a near polar orbit. So most of our remote sensing, Indian remote sensing satellites are the polar orbiting satellites. And the communication satellites are the geostationary satellites. So the GSLV and PSLV, okay? launching vehicles are different. Okay? This is the SWAT. That particular track through which our sensor will sense the area. It is known as a SWAT. Okay? For a particular satellite. This is SWAT. These are some standard terms. Okay? I'm giving you. This is a list for high resolution multispectral image of Mumbai. This is list 4. Indian remote sensing satellite. List 4. So it is a list 4 is the sensor. Okay? So which is having almost 5 meter resolution. 5 meter resolution that means it can detect okay, uh, an object of 5 meter dimension. Below that will be diluted. You will not be able to identify. So anything above 5 meter you will be able to identify. 5 meter dimension. So now you can see uh, we are being able to uh, you know, locate the railway lines and uh, you know all this. This four. Hmm? The stadiums, roads, railways, but the buildings are not visible. Okay? We have a bright color for the buildings. Okay? The reds are the vegetations. Basically, this is a false color where we assign red to the vegetation. So the vegetation appears as red in a false color. Have you ever experienced the uh, Google Earth? Please go through it, Google Earth. Okay? So there you will see the true color. Okay? So if you compare the true color of this part of Mumbai, the beach, okay, Juhu, in Google Earth and in this image, then you will understand. In Google Earth, the vegetation appears as a green. Okay? But here, the vegetation appears as a red because we assign red color to vegetation. Okay? So this is a false color. List for high resolution multi spectral images. Some of the buildings are now also visible. Okay? Now, see, this is a particular technology where we can identify the objects and we can interpret it. Any changes we can interpret. Suppose the assigning the red color is actually helping us to identify the vegetation very easily, right? So that any changes to the vegetation covered can be identified, okay? Similarly, the buildings and other objects. Now, can you see in this particular image, we have a different tone of ray. Do you see this ray and this ray? Both are different, okay? Now, this part of the I know this is settlement, this part of the settlement and this part of the settlement. They are different. Can you see the color? Color is different. Okay? So this is the texture is different, the color is different. Okay? So suppose we are not familiar with that particular area. It is not known to us. We have never been to that particular area. We are trying to understand, we are trying to interpret the area using this particular image. Now, there are some elements which actually help us to identify the objects in remote sensing. And this is known as a visual interpretation of satellite image. Now, for a visual interpretation, if you would like to interpret this particular image, okay, I know that you have never been to this particular area. 
Okay, but you like to identify the objects. Now you have to rely on some of the basic elements of visual image interpretation. Now, what are these basic elements of the visual image interpretation? Tone, shape, size, pattern, texture, shadow, and association. I'm kind. I'm going to explain them one by one. Now the tonal variation. See the tonal variation here. So this is an active uh, volcano which is located, which is covered by a quick bird image in 2002. Quick bird is a very high resolution image, okay? High resolution satellite image. Now here you will be able to see the tonal difference. So this this is a hill basically. It's a it's an active volcano, okay? So here is the crater, okay? The mouth of the volcano. So this is a what is this? Not smoke. Clouds. Not clouds, smoke. smoke coming out of there. Okay? I know this is a vegetation. So, can you see the difference between the tones? Okay? So, this is not exactly red, but this red is actually faded away slowly, slowly. So, that means towards the top, very lazy vegetation. These are almost rocks. Rocks. So, these are the rocks. Okay? And from downwards, you can see the vegetation. So this is a tonal difference, okay? So the tonals refer to the color. So that color difference, okay, enables us to identify this particular object. Okay, how do I know that this is a volcano with the locational information? I know that in this particular area on the earth surface there is a volcano active, so it captures, so I know that this is a volcano. Now see, it's very important, see. For instance, suppose you have two buildings. How it helps actually? Now, this example is from, uh, uh, I guess this is from uh, one of the air, uh, airports. But suppose the same. Two buildings. Okay? See, I'll be able to identify looking at the same. So there is a row. This is one building one building and there is one building like this okay and oh no sorry so there is another building of this size these are the seams now in rural areas or in some of the urban areas also, semi-urban areas, sub-urban areas. If I see this kind of a say, then I will immediately understand that this must be a school. Okay? If I see in an urban area this kind of a safe, I must understand that this is going to be a commercial building or a huge administrative building because it's a safe of a pentagon, okay? which is quite unusual for residential complexes, right? Okay? So, in that manner, save help us to identify the objects. Okay? See, looking at the same, I can clearly identify that this is going to be a pyramid. So, this is a great pyramid of design, captured by Kuibar in 2002. Kuibar is a uh, that particular image from the US. Okay? Now, size. Again, the size, for instance, suppose uh, you are in a zone, you know that this zone is comprises of commercial, residential and industrial area. Now there will be n number of buildings you will visualize, visualize, you will be able to see using the satellite image. Now the size of the buildings will tell that, okay, this must be the commercial or industrial area, size and shape will help you, okay, like big, big, uh, you know, kind of, uh, suppose if you have this kind of elongated, elongated safe buildings. So, they must be warehouses. You will be, you'll be immediately you'll be able to identify, okay, this is the industrial area. Suppose you have big, big buildings like this, I mean, safe like this. You will be able to identify, okay, this must be a commercial area. And small, small square safe residential units or the building units, they will, this must be an Residential area. See, this is the Canada. 
okay, Ontario, Canada, in 2000. So now you will be able to easily identify. See, these are the residential units. Okay, this must be a commercial unit, the tower. Okay, so this is a railway line. Okay, the big buildings, commercial buildings, the high-rise twin towers, everything. It is easier here because it is a very high resolution image, but with a low resolution also, we will be able to identify with the help of size, shape, tone, and etc. Now, pattern. Pattern is also very important. Can you identify this? Red, red circles. They are the sprinkler irrigation system. So here, the vegetation is present. In these areas, there is no vegetation. Okay. So these are the vegetations. So this this pattern tells us that okay, this is a part of a some kind of a nursery or garden kind of a thing where they have a sprinkler irrigation system. Okay. This pattern is also important in our part of the world to identify or to distinguish between tea gardens, forest areas, and the agricultural fields. Okay. See, forest areas, what will be the difference between the forest area and the agricultural field? If you go to see this in the, uh, suppose if you uh, in Google Earth, you go and see the part of Tinsukia or Dibrugan. Okay. So you will see the combination of uh, forest, tea garden, and agricultural area. Now, forest you will, you, will, you will be easily able to identify because of the uh, texture, okay? the coarse texture, hmm? because of tall trees. But your tea gardens and the, your uh, agricultural fields will have the same kind of a shape, square shape, man-made shape. Okay? But the tea gardens, again the texture will be different from the agricultural fields. Agricultural fields will have a smooth texture of vegetation, whereas the tea leaves, in case of the tea leaves, and due to the presence of the shadow giving trees in, um, inside the tea gardens, you will have a coarse resolution, coarse texture. Okay? So then you will be able to identify, okay, both are man made, but this must be an agricultural field and this is a tea garden. Okay? You try to see. Okay? In, a, in a Google Earth image, you try to see the tonal variation, the safe variation in case of our tea gardens and the agricultural fields. So this is pattern. Again, we know that this is the coast. Okay? So this is a part of coast in Australia, Gold Coast of Australia. It is again Iconos image. Texture, as I have already mentioned, texture. Forest canopy, light texture, and other canopies are going to be smooth texture, rough and smooth. Okay? So this is a smooth texture. I know that this is a man-made. This is not natural. Okay? These are the gardens, orchards, where we have a sprinkler irrigation system. But for here, I know that these are the forests. Can you see the texture? Taj Mahal, garden. Okay? See the texture of the nearby forest? Same green, but the texture is different. Okay, and in case of the you know the safe pattern, okay, so this is a man-made feature, clearly visible, square shape. Okay, so this is a forest. There is no shape, hmm? and texture shape it will help us to identify to distinguish between two types of green, okay, vegetation. This is shadow. This is a shadow from the cloud. Okay, so the shadow is also helpful in interpreting. It provides an idea of the relative height of the feature, relative height of the feature. So uh, these are the cloud covers here. So this is a part of uh, your, your Indonesian archipelago, Fiji archipelago. This is a part of Fiji archipelago. archipelago. Can, can you see that here in this image you will be able to clearly see? See the shadow. We know. This particular building and this tower, they are adjacent to each other. See the shadow part of this building and the shadow part of this tower. We know that this tower must be very taller and this tower is taller than this building. Why? Because it has a long shadow. Can you see? Though they are almost closer to each other, okay? it has a long shadow. In that manner, actually, shadow helps us. But in case of uh, satellite image, sometimes it is not uh, good to have shadows. You know? 
because the saddles offset the information. Hmm? Like we do not like to have a uh, satellite image with a uh, huge cloud cover because the cloud cover, the shadow and cloud will obstruct the object below. Okay, so we will not be use, able to use that particular image. So the cloud and cloud shadow, cloud cover is not uh, acceptable or desirable in case of your remote sensing technology. But definitely shadow has its own merit because with the help of shadow we will be able to get some idea about the height, relative height of the object. Relative height, not the absolute height, relative height of the object. Mozambique flooding. This is flood in Mozambique. You see the cloud cover everywhere. Cloud cover. Okay. Same image, Canada. This is Simla. Uh, it's a very coarse resolution, 24 meter resolution. Okay. So that part of Simla is not visible. So this is. Can you see? These are the hill states. Okay. The shadows because of the hills. Hmm? Can you see the tonal variation here? The bright colors, bright things here. So this is setting them. Okay. These are the uh, vegetations, vegetations, lace vegetation. Okay. This is the shadow, and the hillside effect is showing you that. Okay. This is a particular satellite image of a hilly terrain. Hilly terrain. These shadows tells us that okay, this is the image of a hilly terrain. Okay. And the tonal variation, color variation, we can identify where. Uh, the settlement is located. Okay. Last, association. Association is very important. It helps us to identify association. For instance, uh, commercial properties, industrial properties, industrial locations will be close, close to the highways. Right? Railway lines connecting the industrial zones. So, if there is an industrial zone and you are seeing some big, big safe buildings or something like that, then you will be able, easily I, I, able to identify that must be an industrial zone. Okay? Some big, big high rise, kind of a big safe along with a major highway, okay, this must be a commercial complex or something like that. So, this is a part of Mumbai. This is the settlement area. Settlement area, these are the commercial areas. Can you see the pattern of the buildings? Okay, pattern of the buildings. Here there is no pattern. We can see some patterns here. This is a major highway. Okay, so you see that we can easily identify this must be a commercial area. Yes, it is in Mumbai. Okay, this is a commercial area. These are the residential areas. But this association also helps us to identify the objects. Okay, railway lines and road lines. See the association. Okay. Side and location. Okay, I know this is this this is not cloud cover. This is snow cover. Why? Because I know the location. This is a picture of Mount Everest by Iconos, four meter resolution. So this is not cloud. This is snow. So location also gives us some knowledge. Okay, if I know the location, like that volcano, active volcano, because I know the location. That's why I'll be able to identify that particular object very easy. That this is uh, the smoke coming out of the ethnic volcano, this is snow on the you know, high mountain, so like that. Last slide. It is very helpful, the remote sensing technology is very helpful to identify the changes detection. Change detection. So this is the Athens Olympic Sports Complex. Okay, captured by Athenos 14 June 2003, 24 July 2004, 15 March 2001. So this is a starting point, 2001, 2003, and 2004 July. It tells Olympic location. Can you see the changes? The old structures, okay, been completely renovated to a new structure. This kind of change detection. So there are n number of uses of this remote sensing technology. It provides the basic data for our decision support system to be used in the GIS system. We can do the, uh, you know, um, Inventory, resource inventory mapping, land use land cover chains, okay, flood and other, you know, the damage by the flood and other atmospheric, you know, natural hazards and like that. So in every aspect of uh, our analysis, our decision making, the remote sensing technology supports, okay, they provide the basic data which is required to work on. So that's why this remote sensing technology is very useful. Thank you.